What's going on, Charles Botenston here. Today we are gonna be having one of the most important videos that you're gonna witness. And the reason being is that, well, maybe not witness, but watch on my channel. <laughs> Maybe there's going to be something else that you see that you're like, holy shit, that was the most important video I ever saw in my life. I remember hearing back in the day, and by back in the day, I mean like maybe eight years ago, Arnold Schwarzenegger talking about how he broke down going from just a guy in the army to Mr. Olympia to the top paid Hollywood actor to going and being governor. And he said, all I had to do was just show up and do this and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like... Yeah, but you have, and, and he was told, you know, you have a weird name, you have an accent, you're too big to be uh, in Hollywood, or you're not smart enough to be governor, or whatever the case is. He heard all these haters, and he just he just expected it, and he said he essentially multiplied all of the aspects that made him an Olympian to become top Hollywood actor, to become the governor. And I started thinking about it, and I was like, yeah, but they, they don't really relate, I don't... It, it, it didn't make sense until I started triathlon training. So essentially a triathlon is you swim, then you bike, then you run. It depends on the distance. There's sprint, Olympic, half, and then full Ironmans. And essentially uh, this year I'm gonna be doing two half Ironmans. I'm also gonna be doing an Olympic and actually two Olympic. So I'm gonna do four total triathlons this year. And it's not easy. It's not easy because I haven't ran in 10 years. I haven't swam in 20 years. I've been biking, so I've been confident in that. But the thing is, there's really six takeaways and I'm gonna give you a bonus at the end. The first takeaway is that you will suck at first. So essentially, my whole mentality going into it was, this is what I wanna do. In other words, this is the event I wanna to go to. So I had a goal and I was like, well, you know, like, I, am I gonna be good? Is my, how, how's my cardio? You know, how's my form? Am I gonna get injured? Am I gonna do this every single day? How am I gonna train? All these thoughts, all these things are going through my mind. This could apply anywhere in my life. You know, I wanna start prospecting. I wanna start reaching out to people. I wanna start eating healthy. I want a new group of friends. I wanna start saving money. I wanna get into college. I wanna become the captain of my team. Whatever that ultimate goal is, these things will apply to every area of your life. That is why I'm saying this is the most important is that, and now I understand why Arnold Schwarzenegger was saying that if he takes whatever he learned in becoming Mr. Olympia to becoming the top paid Hollywood actor, he just multiplied it in a different area. And this is essentially it, is that you're gonna suck at first. You're not gonna be good. I, I got into the pool and I only did, I think my first one was like 400 yards, 500 yards, and I was dying. I just did 1,500 yards the other day. That's that, And that was only a week and a half later. So really, it's not that you're not good or you're not good enough. You just are not, you just don't have the training yet. So just know that you're not gonna be good at it. If you, if you wanna start prospecting, you're gonna suck at first. And then along with that, I say, you, you have this mentality that see you at the pool. I'm gonna be talking about that at another one. See you at the pool is obviously in a reference to Michael Phelps, obviously his coach and him. They really worked in tandem to get him the 23 gold medals, which is insane. That's complete domination in the Olympics, especially nowadays when everyone just has a coach, nutrition, sleeping, everything is down to a pack. Number two is there's three metrics when you're training. There's frequency, duration, and intensity. Frequency is how often do you do it, duration is how long do you do it, and intensity is how hard do you do it. So in other words, if you're training, you know, do you bike for 10 minutes very hard and once a week? So that, that's everything. This is what I've noticed is that you can either do it very often, keep on going to say the pool or running or anything else, you could keep on doing it very often, you can have once a week and do it for five hours, or you can go intensity a 10, one out of 10, once a week for five minutes, okay? There, there's, there's all these different things. But within each training session, there's, you're gonna hit a threshold within these three. How long, how hard, and how often do you do it? This is the biggest thing is that it's not how hard you do it or how long you do it, it's how often you do it. How often do I train? And and I it's called the Triathlon Bible. And within the Triathlon Bible, that's all he talks about. He goes, just do it more often. He goes, I would rather you show up seven days a week at a level five than a level 10 four days a week or three days a week. And the reason being is that your muscles do not get used to that. You don't tear down your muscles. And obviously, yes, there's training regimens and recovery and sleep and everything like that for all those people that are freaking out. But essentially he says, show up consistently 
is the root of all training. Do it at a lower level, but show up. Frequency is king. Number three is accountability. So it, it was very interesting. I was listening to this guy and uh, he's a real estate coach, or actually he owns a real estate company and he's a coach on the side. And what he noticed is, is he's not good at accountability. He's not good at showing up. The thing is, what he does is he puts in place a training partner at the gym or someone he's gonna be prospecting with or ensuring that his wife keeps him, hold, keeps him accountable on personal finances or on business finances, he brings in a CFO or an accountant. So in other words, essentially, he wants to go into an area, but he needs to bring someone with him. So with me, is I'm the exact same way. I'm not gonna, this morning, this is the perfect example. I wake up, I see that there's a little light coming through my apartment window and I'm like, That's that's not good because I know that I wake up in the darkness and just obviously time of day or time of the year and everything like that. So essentially I said, Alexa, what time is it? And Alexa goes 6.30 and I'm like, Pah. I slept through my alarm. I clearly needed to sleep, but I woke up, I was an hour outside of what I needed to do to make, to make sure that I was training. This is the thing, I got up and I had to go there. The reason being is that I'm being held accountable on my watch. My watch syncs to an app on my phone, which syncs to my coach. So. She's gonna say, yeah, you checked off that you did it, but I didn't get your heart rate monitor, I didn't get a duration, I didn't get how far you went, I didn't get any of the metrics that measure what we need. So the accountability for me is my coach. The accountability to show up. I didn't wanna go this morning. I was tired, I wanted more sleep, I needed to go to a, uh, an Equinox class for 45 minutes and then run for another 45 minutes, that's an hour and a half. So you're looking at like a two hour, once you stretch and get everything ready, that's two hours of your life. This is the thing, you have to put accountability into your life, whether that's posting on social media, whether that's doing Facebook Lives or, or ensuring that your spouse, your partner, your colleague, your friend also get involved. Put money on the line, put it out there, all right? Moving on. Number four is it bleeds into other areas, okay? This is, this is the thing, is that because I'm so religious to my training and because the training is so hard and so long early in the morning is I get out of that training and I'm like, what else in my life am I lacking at? Because I am blowing through all these barriers in my mind. I'm blowing through how far I could run, how far I could swim, how long and intense can my bike rides be. I'm blowing through all these things, all these limiting beliefs, all these ceilings that I thought thought I had physically. And it's funny too, I, I, I gave my, my coach an audio message this morning and I was like, I really appreciate you, thank you so much. And she's world renowned, she's coached tons of athletes and obviously she's clearly doing a really good job raising a family along with coaching on the side. It's, it, she's a blessing and obviously goes through nutrition and everything else. But I gave her the, a heads up this morning, I said, I zoned in and I didn't think I could zone in while running because if you, I didn't think that I was good at running. That's what I told her. She's like, okay, what are you good at? What are you bad at? What do we need to work on? Blah, blah, blah. That was our initial call. I said, listen, I don't like running. I don't think I like running. This morning, you know what I noticed is the reason I don't like running because I wasn't good at it. So then when I started blowing through these barriers, the being on the treadmill for 15 minutes at a time at a 750 pace, okay, 750 for a mile. I was like, holy shit, this is longer than I thought. Then I went to 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 35 minutes today at a 750 pace. I was like, I didn't think I could do that. I'm literally getting the chills right now. I'm like, I didn't think I could do that. And I was like, I really appreciate you because she's ramping up the intensity. She's ramping up the duration. The frequency is still there. But just know that having the accountability and how this bleeds into other areas, now I'm thinking, where else am I lacking? All right, moving on, number five. I already said it, but you're essentially, there's gonna be times that you don't want to do it. You don't wanna, this morning, I didn't wanna go. There's gonna be plenty of times you're not gonna wanna talk to that person that might ask you for business or, or give you business. You might not wanna ask for the clothes. You might not wanna prospect or ask that pretty girl out or ask that guy out or, or send that email or wake up early or go to bed or skip that, that concert because you're training in the morning or not, not have that, that extra drink because you feel like you need that extra drink at night, there will be time. This is the thing. And I wrote it down here and I, I said it on my audio message to my coach this morning. I said, I am chasing the feeling I have right now. Any time that I go to something that I, I, I can't give you this feeling. This feeling can't be bought. It's not by getting new 
AirPods. It's not because, oh my God, I got new AirPods. I have this great feeling. Yeah, maybe you have a great feeling, but it's, it's, it's not because you worked at it. It's because you just bought it. It's the same thing with social media. It's the same thing with business or anything else. When you go through a tough deal, yes, the commission check feels good, but it's really saying, I went through this transaction. It was really challenging. There were 12 people that were saying, I don't think this can happen between the attorneys, the management companies, all these things. I'm in real estate. And this is the thing is that commission check, yes, it's good money, but it's also just saying, you know what? If I can go through one of the hardest transactions, what else can I do? And then with that, you're chasing the feeling of accomplishment. I can't give you that. You can't, you, you can't get that by sitting on the couch. You can't get that by uh, dreaming about it. Affirmations, visualizations, because the winner effect takes a hold. So the winner effect essentially means when you start winning, you're gonna win more. And the reason being is that you get shot up with all these hormones, these feel-good hormones, EDSO, endorphins, dopamine, serotonin, serotonin, oxytocin. You get shot up with all these feel-good. The people that lose, the they get pumped up with cortisol, which is the stress hormone, and they feel, they start lowering their back. They start thinking they're not good enough. Feel good hormones is essentially what I'm going for. Number six, time becomes precious. She gives me the training schedule. That's two hours of my day. So I'm thinking about it. Okay, if I wake up at 4.45, I get to the gym, or 4.45, I have to get my bag ready. I'm out of the house and ready, you know, clean up my apartment, get my, cause I have multiple sports. So I have, I have running shoes, I have hit shoes. So hit shoes is high intensity training. So I have all these things that I have to put into my bag. So I wake up at 4.45, 5.15, I'm ready to leave. Get to the gym right after 5.30. Stretch, get on the treadmill by 5.45. Get done by 5.30. My Equinox class starts at 6.45. Do that till 7.30. 7.30, I then have to get into the shower, get dressed, and I'm at the office by eight. I have to schedule that in. So what does that mean? That actually doesn't start at 4.45. That starts the night before. So I'm thinking, okay, if I go out on a date, I have to be done by 8.30 and at home and turned off by nine o'clock. And the reason being is that if I start going out at night, drinking too much, having, which we're gonna talk about, the bonus after this. But if I start doing the things that are just sucking up my time, I also wrote, you just don't deal with people's bullshit. People come up to you, they wanna complain. They wanna talk about a deal or something wrong with their, their boyfriend or their girlfriend or the economy or the president or a politician or something, you know, a TV show. It doesn't fucking matter. Literally, my sister was in here yesterday and I was like, I was like, I kinda need to do some work, you know? It's just, you can become really religious with your schedule and you actually hold yourself to the schedule. The bonus thing is nutrition you treat like a cult. And the reason being is if you don't have enough water, you are gonna cramp up. And this isn't a cramp where you're like, oh, okay, no, no, no. This is a cramp that I can't even explain how hard it is. It hurts so bad. The cramp hurts so, it tightens up and you literally sit there in pain. Your eyes are closed and it's just like, it, it feels like someone is just vicing your muscles together. And that is the extreme portion of training without water or salt pills. Then you start getting into nutrition. Okay, do I need starch? Do I need potassium? Do I need magnesium? Then you start really getting into it. What does magnesium do? Okay, it relaxes my muscles, but then starch actually replenishes it. Bananas are great for obviously not only your muscles and recovery, but it's also a good way to add in all the fructose that you need. So you should just become religious to this nutrition that I can't even tell you. So I would say you gotta do a challenge in life. Okay, you, like this year, you gotta do a challenge. Whether that's a challenge to do a Spartan race, do a challenge half marathon. And I'm not talking about anything else. Physical challenges give you a feeling no one can give you because it's accomplishment. And then you get addicted to it. I got it, I'm addicted to it. I told her, I'm, I'm addicted. I'm gonna be doing this for years. So long as you keep me on a good regimen, I keep religious to my schedule, to my nutrition, to my sleep, to recovery, to stretching. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a fucking athlete that's just gonna be doing this till I'm 45. You know, that, that's decades out. You know, how many races, how many other, other things can I do in life because of this? So, hope that helps a little bit. Um, I highly recommend, obviously triathlon is hard, okay? Ironman is hard. Start with something small, 5K. Go on a swim, go on a bike, go on the treadmill, go to a HIIT class, go to an Equinox class, go to yoga. Do something that's physical. That's the only way. And I'm telling you, it will bleed into other areas of your life. Leave your comments below. Have an amazing day.